dedicated to the strength of the nation, now heard on 1,000 radio stations. Proudly, we hail. Yes, Proudly, we hail, starring Angela Lansbury in Birthday for Martha, the United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. Now, here is your host, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, thank you. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. And once again, a cordial welcome to Proudly We Hail, where each week you hear a star of your choice in a story we know you'll enjoy. Our star, Angela Lansbury, is just now coming into her own as one of the truly fine young dramatic actresses of motion pictures. And our Proudly We Hail production provides Miss Lansbury the chance to display her fine dramatic ability. It's a gripping dramatic love story, birthday for Martha. We'll have act one in a moment, but first, a brief word from Wendell Niles. America's design for peace is embodied in your regular Army and U.S. Air Force. By continuing technical development and maintenance of a sufficiently trained body of men, your Army and Air Force stand ready to discourage aggression. And your men in uniform are improving themselves in a worthwhile career by vocational training in cultural and academic education at the United States Armed Forces Institute. They are contributing to their own and their country's well-being. And now, back at the microphone, our producer. And now, Act One of Birthday for Martha, starring Angela Lansbury as Martha Winters. <laughs> It's evening, a time meant for home and the family circle. But while millions of families all over the world are gathering together to share their lot, a group of women in a falsely gay dining room of a Reno hotel are gathered together to anticipate the shattering of their family ties. Among them is one much younger than the rest, a girl who seems strangely out of place. Her name is Martha Winters. Why so quiet, Martha? Oh, I didn't realize that I was. Well, you're not exactly a gay mad thing, you know. I'm sorry, Mabel. Oh, forget it. It's just that this happens to be my birthday. And it isn't at all like other birthdays. I know, honey. But you should have thought of that before you came to Reno. <laughs> if I did, I wouldn't be back here. So I told him, look, I gave you the best year of my life, and now you pay off. <laughs> How can they be so callous about divorce, Mabel? Don't they realize what they're doing? What it means? Better than you do. The laughing's just a phony front, honey. When they go to bed tonight, they'll cry on their pillows just the same as you and me. And still they go through with it? Sure, for the same reasons we will. They're either too proud or too stubborn or their husbands are. To admit that the faults aren't all on one side. I'm not too proud. Hmm? Or too stubborn either. I'm going up to my room to call Jim and ask him to come and take me back. Hello? Mrs. Winters? Yes? Los Angeles ready. Go ahead, please. Thank you. Hello? Winters ready. I I'd like to speak with Mr. Winters, please. This is Mrs. Winters. Oh, hello, Mrs. Winters. This is Kate. How are you, Kate? Fine, thank you. Uh, Mr. Winters is dead. Oh. Well, please ask him to call me as soon as he returns. I, I don't care how late he is. I I'll be waiting for his call. Don't expect him back tonight, Mrs. Winters. What? Your friend, Mr. Rod, stopped by for him about four o'clock. And when they left, he said he definitely wouldn't be back this evening. Oh. Oh, I see. Is, is there any message, Mrs. Winters? No. No message. Thank you. I I'll write him a letter. <laughs> Dear Jim, I'll soon be celebrating my birthday in Reno. The only one we haven't spent together. But it seems like forever. We've come a long way since our first celebration, darling. Today we have money, position, and nothing. Then we had nothing and everything, each other. 
Though it seems so long ago, I'll, I'll never forget that first birthday present you gave me. And I hope you won't either. It really began on the day before when I sat in our tiny one-room apartment waiting for your knock on the door. Coming! Have any luck, Jim? I raised three dollars on my watch. Did the check come? Well, not in this morning's mail. I haven't been down to look this afternoon. I'll go right now. It's not necessary. The postman was leaving as I came in. There's nothing in the mailbox. Oh. Well, maybe it'll come registered or, or special delivery. Or two weeks from now. Why can't publishers send the check when they accept a story? Writers want to give their wives birthday presents as well as publishers do. Oh, Jim, dear. I don't have a thing for you. I was planning on that check. We'll get it eventually, Jim. Eventually. And in the meantime, we're better off than a lot of other people. We have each other. And three dollars. Don't forget the three dollars. Hey, that's right. Let's go shopping. Hmm? Oh, I'll get some hamburger. And, well, I could make some mock chicken legs and salad and sweet potatoes. But and... it's raining. The weather can't stop happening. Put on your coat and let's go. I think we have everything now, don't we, Jim? I don't know how you got what you did with three dollars. Two dollars and sixty-three cents, to be exact. <laughs> and now if we can get a couple of candles for a quarter or so. Oh, Jim. Mm. Gosh, I love you. Well, you couldn't you waited until we got home or out of the rain? Nope. When I feel like kissing my wife, I kiss her. Shine, mister? Hmm? Huh? Who said that? Me, mister, down here. Let me shine your shoes, huh? Oh, sorry, son, but I can't... Please, mister, i got to raise some money for my mom's birthday. How old are you? I'll be nine. Nine? Well, I'm little for my age. When will you be nine? In a couple of years. That's just what I thought. You're much too young to be out in this kind of weather. What's your name? Joe Wilkins. How about that shine, mister? Well... If we give you a quarter, will you go home, Joe? Lady, I can't. I promised Mom we'd have a real birthday dinner this year. With meat and everything. And you can't buy anything for a quarter. If you'll let me shine your shoes, mister, that'll give me a start and then I can... Jim. Yeah, go ahead. Well, do you think you could carry this bag of groceries all the way home, Joe? Huh? There's meat and sweet potatoes and, well, there's everything. You ain't kidding me, are you, lady? No, Joe, I'm not kidding you. It's my birthday, too, see. And I'd like your mother to have her birthday dinner. Gee. Gee, I don't know what to say. Except thanks and happy birthday. Tell your mother happy birthday, Joe. Gee. And here's your quarter. Maybe you can buy a couple of candles. You people must be awful rich. We are now. Aren't we, Jim? Yeah. Mm. Jim. Hmm. As I said before, when I feel like kissing my wife, I kiss her. Can you ever forget that, Jim? We bought a can of soup with our remaining 12 cents and returned home to find that the letter containing our check had been slipped under the door with a note from Mr. Oliver saying it had been put in his mailbox by mistake. We were suddenly rich. $250. <laughs> And we were so impressed that we sat there talking about all the things we were going to buy until the banks had closed and we couldn't cash the check. So we still had the canned soup for my birthday party. Right after that, things began to break for us. Your story sold regularly and I was launched on my career as a studio designer. Because we felt that we owed a large portion of our good luck to little Joe Wilkins and his mother, we hired a detective to locate them for us. And my next birthday, we called on them. Hello, Joe. Hello, Joe. Do you remember us? I don't think I... Hey, Mom! It's the guy and lady who gave me those groceries last year. Well, ask them to come in. Yeah, come in. I didn't recognize you. You're so dolled up. I'm Mrs. Wilkins. All year long, I've been praying for a chance to thank you for what you've done for Joe and me last year. We didn't know your name, so... It's we... Winters, Mrs. Wilkins. I still don't know how to thank you. Oh, don't try. I'm sure it did us more good than it did you. It couldn't have. We think it did. That's why we brought these things. All those things for us? And there's a cake with candles in the car. Gee, 
Were you ever able to get that couple of candles last year, Joe, with your quarter? No. That is, I didn't try exactly. I used the quarter to buy Mom a present. Those earrings she's wearing now. Aren't they pretty? I think they're beautiful, Joe. Just perfectly beautiful. You aren't mad because I didn't buy candles, are you? Oh, of course they're not, Joe. Joe's a good boy. He certainly is, Mrs. Wilkins. If I ever have a son, I... I'd like him to be just like Joe. Mm, thank you, Mr. Winters. That's the nicest birthday present any mother could ask for. I think so, too, Mrs. Wilkins. Come on, Jim. Let's go home. We have to put out decorations for the party. <laughs> Do you think anyone in the world could possibly be as happy as we are, Jim? I doubt it. Now, if we just had three or four kids... Three or four? Well, we haven't been married two years, you know. So what? The Dion's did it. Well, you'll have to admit that was a little unusual. <laughs> yeah, I suppose so. <laughs> Still, it seems to me that if a gal is smart as you really put her mind to it... Hey, where are those streamers? In that box. Oh, yeah, they're right here beside the ladder. I'll be right in. Gosh. You look even lovelier tonight than you did a year ago. I have more reason to. Would you really like to have children, Jim? Would I? What a question. I'm glad. Because that's the way I feel. And, Jim, you're going to have one. We're going to have a baby? When did you find out? Well, I saw Dr. Brown the day before yesterday, and he confirmed it. I waited until tonight to tell you. Something extra special. What? Why, that's wonderful. Oh, darling, I... I love you so much. Here. Here, sit down. L let, let me get you a cup of hot chocolate or something. Oh, please, Jim. No, don't give me that. You've got to be careful. You're responsible for two now, you know. Or maybe more. More? It might be twins. There's lots of twins in my family. Do you want a boy or a girl, darling? I don't care. Just as long as it's a baby. Well, I think we can be pretty well count on that. <laughs> Now, before our guests arrive, let's get the decorations up. You sit still. I'll take care of the decorations. Nonsense. I'm not an invalid. <laughs> they don't wrap women up in cotton batting anymore, you know. Here, hand me that streamer and I'll fasten it up here. Martha, get down from that ladder. I'll take care of all that. Oh, please, hand me that streamer, Jim. Well, Martha, you're leaning too far. Martha! <laughs> Martha, Martha. Oh, Jim. Are you all right, dear? Please the doctor right away, Jim. We pause briefly from our story, Birthday for Martha, starring Angela Lansbury, to bring you an important message. A modern career in a modern world. That's what young men want today, and that's what they have in the U.S. Air Force. You high school graduates can get in on the ground floor of a career in aviation. Yes, you can pick your Air Force specialty and receive a well-rounded training in that specialty. You'll become an expert in your field. Let's suppose you want to become a radar technician. At your Air Force recruiting station, you write down your request for radar training. Then if you qualify, and after you are accepted for the Air Force school that gives you that training, you enlist for three, four, or five years. After a short basic training, you go to the school for which you have been accepted. It's as simple as that, high school graduates. Put your application in today at your U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station. And now, Act Two of Birthday for Martha, starring Angela Lansbury as Martha Winters. Spending her birthday in Reno, waiting for her divorce, Martha Winters changed her mind and called her home in Los Angeles to ask her husband, Jim, to come and take her back. But his call was too late. Jim had already left the house with Martha's best friend. In a letter she is writing to Jim, Martha is sadly reliving their life together. When I fell from that ladder and lost our baby, it was the beginning of the end for us, Jim. During those days and nights that I lay on that hospital bed, I made up my mind that I would never again have a child. I know it was foolish, perhaps even wicked, but that was the way I felt, Jim. And there didn't seem to be anything I could do about it. 
And despite all the tender understanding you offered me, I turned from you and buried myself in my work. During that year, we gradually drifted apart. When my birthday arrived, it seemed almost as though we were two strangers sharing the same household. Because I was afraid to be alone with you in the memories of past celebrations. I had a crowd in that birthday. Open house for a lot of so-called smart people. You didn't like them. Oh, no, darling. <laughs> Perfectly wonderful. Well, darling, I didn't expect to see you here. Oh, why not? Their food and drinks are as good as anyone else's. As a matter of fact, that's the way I feel. I know she's a designer at the studio, but darling, who is he? Oh, he writes or paints or something oh. or other. <laughs> Did you say these people were your friends, Martha? Of course they are. They all work at the studio. No wonder their pictures are bad. Do they have homes or do they just crawl back into the woodwork when a party's over? Jim, you... I'm sorry, dear. Just that I wish they'd all go home so that we could go down and see Joe Wilkins and his mother. Why should we go see them? Well, I, I thought maybe if you saw Joe again, it might help you to... Well, it wouldn't. I don't want ever to see Joe again. All his mother. Ought to be reminded of him. Oh. Well, in that case, if you'll hold down the fort, I'll go down and see them myself. I got Joe an electric train as well as something for his mother. Why should you do a thing like that? Well, if I had a boy of my own, I... I'd like to see his face when he got his first electric train. And since I don't... I suppose you're blaming me for that, too. I suppose if I'd taken your advice and stayed off that ladder, we... Please, Martha. I didn't know it would affect you this way, or I... I wouldn't have mentioned Joe. Well, I, I'll be on my way. Maybe by the time I get back, this mob of sponges will have soaked up all the liquor and gone. Mr. Winter? Uh, yes, Kate? There's a, a Mrs. Wilkins and a boy at the door. <gasps> we'll bring them in, Kate. In here, sir? With your guests? Certainly. They're friends of ours. If the guests don't like them, the guests can get out. Very well, sir. Where are you going, Martha? I don't want to see Joe. Or his mother. But you have to, Martha. They've made the trip here to see us. And... Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Winters. Happy birthday. Hello, Joe. Thank you, Joe. It's good to see you, Mrs. Wilkins. Oh, thank you, Mr. Winters. If we'd ever dreamed that you were having a party... I wouldn't have let Joe persuade me to come. Oh, don't worry about the party. As a matter of fact, I was just about to leave for your place. Well, I told Joe you'd come, but he was afraid something might happen to prevent it. And I so got then some we... presents for you folks this year, and I just had to be sure you got them. These socks are for you, Mr. Winters. Mom knitted them herself. Well, thank you, Joe. They're the finest pair of socks I ever owned. And I got you a pair of earrings, Mrs. Winters, like the kind I got Mom. The ones you thought were so beautiful. Thank you, Joe. I almost wasn't able to get them. They cost 50 cents now. Oh, Joe. I'm sorry, Mom, I forgot. Mom's taught me not to talk about what things cost, but if you knew how hard it was to get that 50 cents, I guess you'd forgive me. We do know, Joe, and we appreciate it. Well, we didn't mean to interrupt your party. We'd better go, Joe. I'm sorry you have to run. Jim... Why don't you give Joe and Mrs. Wilkins a ride home? But they just got here. Mrs. Wilkins looks very tired. All right, I will. Come on, Joe, Mrs. Wilkins. I have some packages for you at the door. We'll pick them up on the way out. Oh. Goodbye. Happy birthday. <laughs> yes, well, goodbye, Mrs. Winters, and uh, happy birthday. Goodbye. Joe, goodbye. Mrs. Wilkins, happy birthday. You, um... Uh... Don't know how much we appreciate having you come all the way out here, Mrs. Wilkins. <laughs> well, I wish we'd phone first. Is Mrs. Winters ill? We, uh, lost a baby last year at this time. She hasn't recovered from the shock yet. Oh, the poor thing. Oh, will you two wait out in the car for me? It's the gray sedan in the driveway. I forgot to kiss Mrs. Winters goodbye. You gonna kiss her in front of all those people? Joe, when you feel like kissing your wife, you kiss her. Well, where did you ever meet such characters, Martha? <laughs> there are some people Jim helped out a couple of years ago. It's her birthday, too. Oh, I know, but why in the world should they postpone you by coming into your home when you had guests? Well, they bought some presents. A pair of hand-knit socks for Jim and these beautiful earrings for me. Aren't they exquisite? They cost all of 50 cents. <laughs> Martha. You slapped me. Get out of here. All of you. Get out of here before I throw you out. Uh, 
when you slapped me, Jim. The world came to an end. The tense, bitter, hysterical world in which I'd been living for a year. I didn't realize what the slap had done for me, though, until later. I was outraged and humiliated when you struck me in front of all those people. And though I knew immediately that I deserved it, my pride and stubbornness, which I had mastered too late, kept me from admitting it to you. From day to day, I lived in hopes that you'd say something, give some indication that I was forgiven, but you didn't. So now, a year later, I'm in Reno, and you're somewhere with Alice Gerard, and not expected home tonight. It's only last week that I wrote Alice a long letter, telling her how wrong I'd be, how much I loved you, and how I wished that you still loved me. That's why I call you tonight, Jim to ask you to come and take me back. I was hoping that the magic we'd known would bring me the greatest possible gift. But I guess I'm a little too old for birthday fairies to remember me. Goodbye, Jim, darling. I hope that you and Alice have many, many happy birthdays together. And that, that you can never forget those you shared with me Love, Martha. <laughs> well, I didn't expect to see you back in here, Martha. Well, it's better than sitting up in the room. Yeah. Talk to your husband, honey. No. He was out. And he isn't expected back tonight. Wow. Well. He's out. With my best friend. Oh, honey, where there's a man involved, a woman doesn't have any friends. Are you sure you love him? More than I ever thought possible. Oh, then why don't you get on a plane and fly back to L.A.? You can't fight some other gal with memories. But I'll give ten to one you'll take him away from her if you're on the scene. Ha, you've got the weapons to do it. I think I'll try it, maybe. a girl! Alice Gerard thinks that she can take Jim away from... Did I hear someone mention my name? <laughs> Happy birthday, Martha. Oh, thank you. How, how did you get here? Flu. Oh, where's Alice? Alice? Alice is in Los Angeles, I suppose. She showed me the letter you'd written her last week and drove me to the airport. She showed you that, that letter? Yes. Did you mean it? That you wanted to call off the divorce, wanted to have a family? Oh, yes. Yes, Jim. Oh, darling, if I'd even guessed that you felt that way. That's what I've been waiting to hear, Jim. And let's get you checked out of here. There's a plane leaving for Los Angeles in less than an hour. Oh, Jim. This is the most wonderful birthday present you've ever given me. Hey, hey, Martha. Everybody in the place is looking at us. I don't care, Jim. Let them look. When I feel like kissing my husband, I kiss him. <laughs> The curtain falls in the final act of Birthday for Martha. Our star, Angela Lansbury, will return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. Veterans, here's another great opportunity in the Army for you. You have your choice of eight famous Army outfits, all now stationed in the United States. If you have served outside the United States after September 1st, 1945, you're eligible to apply. And here are the units for which you can enlist directly. The 2nd, 4th, 5th, and 9th Infantry Divisions, 2nd and 3rd Armored, 2nd Engineer Special Brigade, and 82nd Airborne. And here's something special for you men who have served in the 3rd Infantry Division. You can now enlist directly for the 7th Infantry Regimental Combat Team, stationed at Fort Benning, Georgia. As long as your record is good, you'll stay with that outfit you've signed for, too. Some of you will be able to enlist in grades through sergeant. And that means even more of that high Army pay. So, veterans, take advantage of this enlistment feature especially designed for you. Get complete details right away at your nearest U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station. Now, once again, our star, Angela Lansbury, and our producer. She's the daughter of the famous English stage star, Mona McGill, and a young lady who has already made an enviable mark as a dramatic actress in motion pictures. 
Of course, I refer to our proudly we hailed star, Angela Lansbury. Angela, we thank you for a fine performance. You're most generous, C.P. It was really fun. If I may say so, Angela, the new look looks very becoming on you. Oh, thank you, C.P. You couldn't have said anything more flattering. You see, clothes are my hobby. Oh, that's very interesting. It's true, isn't it, Angela, that the star has the option to buy the clothes she wears in a picture? Well, that's generally true, C.P., but originals by Irene and the other fine dress designers can be very expensive. <laughs> yes, indeed. That's one of the reasons why I like to make my own clothes. You make your own clothes? I'm the personal dressmaker for Angela Lansbury. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's marvelous. And on behalf of our ladies in the audience, I have a question or two. Fire away. First, do you like the new look? Personally, I do. And uh, do you like the ballerina length for dinner? I think it's most becoming. One more. Do you like the extreme Parisian silhouette? No, I don't. But I think there's much charm and grace in the modified version of the Parisian silhouette. By the way, C.P., you seem to be remarkably well-versed in the style. Thanks to my charming wife. Oh? Amazing fact. She likes clothes, too. <laughs> <laughs> but now again, Angela, thanks for a superior performance here in our Theater of Stars. It was a real privilege, C.P., to appear for such a timely sponsor. But now, before I go, what's your playbill going to be for next week? Next week, ladies and gentlemen, we take a real departure on Proudly We Hail to present as part of the nationwide celebration of Army Week a story dedicated to one of the great divisions of the Army, the 3rd Infantry Division. Our drama is called The Letter, and our star will be that sterling young actor of motion pictures, Dennis O'Keefe. That's a must, CP. Count me in. Goodbye. Goodbye, Angela Lansbury. Goodbye. Thanks for dropping over. Again, ladies and gentlemen, we invite you to join us in your theater of stars for our dedicatory show to the 3rd Infantry Division, starring Dennis O'Keefe. Until next week, this is C.P. McGregor saying thanks for listening, and cheerio from Hollywood. Angela Lansbury appeared for the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars on this program. The story was by Bill Hampton, with the orchestra under the direction of Eddie Scrivanek. Remember next week, proudly we hail stars Dennis O'Keefe. This program is transcribed in Hollywood for release at this hour. Wendell Niles speaking.